I'm Daniel Linder, marriage family therapist, addiction specialist, and relationship trainer, practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area for over 30 years. I'm also the creator of the Relationship Model of Addiction. My hope and my intention in these videos is to provide you with a resource for guidance and inspiration on your path of recovery. So each week I'm going to be presenting some new information and I'm just going to recap some of the basic principles and points that I've already made just to kind of keep you on, uh, online here. So again, uh, the quality recovery entails a transition out of unhealthy relationships that feed addiction and into relations, healthy relationships that support recovery and nourish self-growth. So now that, that's the transition of recovery. That's what happens in recovery. So what I want to do is I want to teach you and provide you some, with some guidance to move through this process and so you understand what's happening and what you need to be doing. A couple of main principles that I covered so far uh, is, uh, are the most important relationship is with yourself and what a relationship consists of. A healthy relationship consists of two separate autonomous entities, two separate whole healthy selves. It's called me and you. And so we're going to get back to this. We talked about setting boundaries as a way of defining a relationship and separating me from you. And I'm going to be talking today about some of the difficulties in setting boundaries. It's not a slam dunk. It's not something you just go out and do. There's a process that you go through. So I want to remind you about is what codependency is all about and recovery from codependency. So the biggest challenge that I have seen is this sort of codependent way of relating. And what I'm talking about in terms of codependency is the tendency to put other people of other people's needs and wants and feelings above your own and to have your sense of well-being and identity based on affecting the other person how the other person sees you and feels towards you and you're getting um you're deriving a, a need to be needed when when that need is met you're feeling good and it's how you affect the other person that's the key to your well-being and what we talked about was that in the process of recovery from codependency where it's a complete paradigm shift, where it's a process of reprioritization. So basically what's happening is you're moving from an other-centered way of relating, other-centered, to self-centered. And again, I just want to re quickly review this again so make sure we're on the same page that the healthy relationship with yourself, the most important relationship with yourself is the key principle and what a relationship with yourself means is that you are in touch with, you are in touch with your experience, with your thinking, needing, wanting, feeling, all of that at any given point in time in any relating encounter and you make it a priority to express that so you can be known, so you can be fully present and operating from within yourself. That's the me that you're bringing to the relationship. So, so what I want to talk to you about today a little bit is that this uh, tumultuous, difficult uh, challenge uh, around setting and maintaining boundaries in a relationship. Because I've seen what, you know, when people, when you start getting it and you start moving from other-centered to self-centered, it can be very challenging you're going through this paradigm shift and what happens is it's tantamount to withdrawal. Codependency is an addiction. This external uh, way of relating, you know, other scented way of relating is a deeply ingrained pattern. It's addictive in nature and it's not so easy that it's, you're just, it's, they're, they're deeply ingrained habitual relating patterns and tendencies that you're just not going to change on the dime. It's not going to work that way. So what I've seen happen is that you take someone who has been codependent 
uh, for decades, 20, 30, 40 years, and they're beginning, they're in recovery, they're beginning to realize that, I'll take this person for instance, he's beginning to realize that he's on automatic and takes care, he, he kind of gets hooked into relating to his wife that he's divorced from, he's getting a divorce from, and he's been practicing a policy of distance and disengagement so he can be more self-centered, working from within himself, but invariably he finds himself getting hooked back in to uh, getting into a dynamic with her where he, they get angry at each other and he's feeling spent and demoralized and bad about himself, but he realizes that he needs to detach. This is what he's working on. So one, one thing that it's very important to understand in this process, this paradigm shift, if you're gonna make it real and start relating from a self-centered place, you're gonna be going through a process of withdrawal. When you, when, uh, when you change the way you're relating, it's going to make a very big, very big impact. And first, before you can make the change, you have to be mindful, practicing mindfulness. So you need to be awake and tuned into yourself. That's number one. Number two is when you start uh, trying to practice the distance, the disengagement, or the detachment, it's going to bring up feelings for you, which are going to invariably send you back into codependent relating so you could because that feels better it's more familiar so take this person who I'm talking to you about who is now aware of needing to detach and so I was asking him when he's in that space now and he's aware that he needs to detach or he's aware of getting hooked back in uh, getting more involved with his wife than he wants to be what is he feeling and what he came up with was that he was feeling very empty, emptiness and fear. He was feeling a lot of fear. So we took this a little further and explored what is the fear about. And again, this required mindfulness. He really it took him a lot of time to go into himself and to kind of check out what is actually going on with him. And he was... He was feeling afraid that, oh my, oh my God, you know, what if he's not liked? What if, you know, he was really hung up on how he's perceived by others and his well-being and feeling okay about himself was predicated on how others feel about himself, ab about him, and how he's perceived by others. So what do we do next? This is a process here I'm talking to you about what to do in this difficult transitional process when you're in this kind of emotional withdrawal. What has to happen next, and what I told this client and worked with him through this process is, remember that when I'm talking about the most important relationship is with yourself, what having a relationship is, or what one of the things that having a relationship with yourself means is that you're in constant dialogue with yourself. You're talking to yourself from the place of awareness and when you're having feelings come up that are uncomfortable and scary, you want to handhold yourself, talk yourself through in present time what, what to do, what's going on. Kind of put your arm around yourself and talk, give yourself a good talking to about what, what you need to do right now, what's going on. So with this particular client, he was reminding himself, the self-talk was about reminding himself that these patterns are old, deeply ingrained patterns, that it's because he feels inadequate and worthless, and that he's learned this way of relating uh, to, so that he always looks good. He's always the hero. He's always the good guy in the eyes of others, and that's what makes him feel good. But he doesn't need to do that anymore. It's based on false assumptions. And right now, what he wants and what he's in touch with is that he wants to be in healthier relationships where he can be seen and understood and received and loved for who he is. And he's really looking now for those kinds of deeper connections and more intimacy in his life. So through the process of talking to himself, he is going to feel better about moving forward and kind of exploring this new behavior. So this paradigm shift is when you're going from other-centered to self-centered, 
it's not, just not a slam dunk. You're going through a process of emotional withdrawal and you're going to need to really take care of yourself. Be mindful and nurturing and compassionate and guiding to yourself and assuring in order for you to get in present time and be healthier and move towards self-centered way of relating. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you. This is about setting boundaries, the challenges that come up when you're setting and maintaining boundaries in your relationship. So what I'd like you to do is please leave some comments or questions, particularly about your own struggles in this process, on this journey that you're on in recovery and the, and the, and the challenges and struggles that you have about setting and maintaining boundaries and put, this, put some of those comments down there or those questions and I will respond to them to keep this dialogue going. If, you're, if this was worthwhile to you and you want to learn more about relationships and relating, please Feel free to visit my website where there's a plethora of other kinds of information that you can enjoy and derive tremendous value from. So until then, I'll see you next time. Be well and remember the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships.